Ah, yes. Hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and it is a pleasure and an honor to once again have an opportunity to connect with you. So we're going to cover a lot of ground in a very, very short amount of time. And uh, as we always like to do, we're going to hop around just a bit. We may go off on a tangent, but eventually we'll make our way back around. And we do this with intent because we want to get you out of your mind. We want to keep you heart-centered. In your heart center, that is where you are able to process and hold all of the information that we are presenting to you. Because when you're in your mind, what happens is if it doesn't make sense, if it doesn't resonate with the official version of history, you get a bit confused and you get lost up there because you get the error message that says does not compute. So if you're having difficulties at any point digesting what we're giving you, two things. One, know that you're getting exactly what you need. We are depositing information into your field and how it looks is like a packet of information. So what's contained within the packet may be something like this. It's a nice day, it's 70 degrees, the birds are chirping, the, the grass is green, uh, the sky is blue, there's a scent of rose in the air. That's what's contained in the packet. The words that come out that you are receiving for the mind, it's a nice day. So there's a lot more that you're getting energetically. And you'll continue to unfold the information. You'll, you'll begin to delve into it over the coming days, weeks, and months. So if you're not grasping something, know that it will come up again. You're getting, you're getting it, though. You're getting just what you need for today. Now, with all the information that we present to you, we like to remind you to take what resonates and leave the rest behind. So if it's not making sense or it doesn't feel right to you, let it go. It may be that you're not ready for that level of information or it is not your version of the truth in which you are aligning with. The truth is not absolute. It is always colored by perspective. So we are providing you with a version of the truth today that is going to facilitate your growth. It is not the only version of the truth. And that's a lot for you all in linear form to kind of wrap your mind around because you say the truth is the truth. No, there are many versions. If you've got five people watching something unfold, each of those individuals has a different perspective of what happened. And when you ask for your history, which version do we give you? How do we pick? How do we choose? So we choose the one that's in vibrational alignment with most of you at this time, in this moment, in this space. So you are going through a process of ascension and simply put, that means increasing your vibration. This is an experiment. Earth is the third in a series of experiments to undergo the ascension process. The first two didn't go so well. Earth was designed and it was designed to be a melting pot of sorts for the galactic community. When other parts of your galaxy were not able to integrate, because this is a game of duality, all right, this is a universe based on duality, so all dimensions are working on integration. They're working on letting go of judgment, even we. In the ninth dimension, are still working on letting go of judgment. Now, you know, our extremes of duality aren't even close to what yours are. It would be the difference between medium light gray and medium medium light gray. All right, those are our extremes. For you, it's black and white. So, you know, we are not warring over our disputes. We understand that others have another perspective and it's a valid perspective and we move on from there. But where you are down in density, it's much, much more challenging. And even in the fourth and fifth dimensional levels, where a lot of the issues that you're trying to integrate are stuck, all right, where other parts of the galaxy were having difficulty, a lot of those species were fifth dimensional. You know, already we see some of you going through your mind saying, well, fifth dimensional, shouldn't they have it all together? <laughs> Not at all. Uh, it, it's... It's just a different set of rules, a different game that they're playing, a slightly different perspective. It's not a utopia. And as you go through this ascension process, let us say this to you as well. It is not a utopia that you are moving into. 
to be frank with you, that would be really, really boring. <laughs> so you create challenges for yourselves. It's like you create a problem and a solution, and you hide the solution, and then you get to find it again. <laughs> all right, that's what you all are doing down here, but you've forgotten that you created the problem and the solution together. All right, so it's like an Easter egg hunt. So with this galactic game, you sent representatives from different star systems here to Earth to play out some of these very issues that you weren't able to integrate in other sectors of the galaxy. Earth has genetic material from thousands and thousands of worlds on it. And along with all of that genetic material comes all of the emotional experience of those species. And that's what gives you a huge range of emotional expression. We call Earth the planet of emotion. It is unlike any other planet in the entire universe because of the range of emotion that you experience. Can you imagine another planet that doesn't have as many emotions? Maybe you've got five that you work with. All right. So if you've only got five emotions to work with, it can make it a little more challenging to find solutions to unique problems. All right. You've got a lot of variations here to work with. And that's what you all are doing. So you're increasing your vibration. You're going through this ascension process. And the ascension process is accomplished through the process of the release of fear, what we call integration. To see yourselves as creator beings rather than victims. The victim mindset is a creation of the mind. The mind was created by all of you, by the way, as you came down through this process of dissension. This is a game of descension and reascension. It's not like you're starting at the bottom and working your way up. You are already divine source energy. Right? Do you all understand that? Do you all get that? Can you feel that? That you are divine source itself? You're an aspect of divine source, which means you contain within you and you have access to all that ever was and will be. Take a breath. You've just forgotten how to access it, and that's what we're here to remind you of. So, as you are increasing your frequency, you are triggering more and more of your fears, more and more of the lower vibrations. <coughs> Because as you activate the higher frequencies, the lower ones begin to vibrate to try to increase, to match the resonance of the higher frequencies. The way that looks in your physical reality is it gets projected. Your reality is a projection of your vibratory state. So as that lower frequency starts to vibrate and be pulsed out, your physical reality starts to reflect that back to you. And so you see your fears manifested in front of you. The way you all set up this game was because you knew that it was going to be challenging in density, you weren't going to remember all the programs that were running in the mind, that your physical reality was going to be a reflection. So anything you wanted to know that was going on at the subconscious level, you could see it reflected back through your relationships. This is why we talk about the law of reflection. It's your best friend right now as you're trying to figure out what programs are running at the subconscious level. Simply look and see what it is is being reflected back to you. And as you observe this, you're able to look and see how and why you created it. How is it of service to you, especially when you create those moments of drama, those moments of discomfort, of fear. You created it. You're not victimized by it. And when you go to that level of awareness, you're shifting from the mind into the heart center. You can think of it like two different operating systems. The mind is the operating system for the linear reality, that third dimensional perspective, which is very unique, by the way, because when you go up into the higher realms, there are no distortions like there are that you're experiencing now. You see multiple timelines. From the linear perspective, you only see 
one timeline and that's all you think that you're on. But in reality, you're constantly moving back and forth between them. The heart center is the operating system for the multidimensional perspective. There are no distortions held within the heart. So you can get pure data. You can interpret it. The mind receives that same stream, that same frequency, but it was designed to filter all out the excess, all the other timelines, all the other multidimensional information. And so it just throws it out. That's what it was designed for. Quite efficient, isn't it? But the heart center can hold it all. And when you perceive how and why you've created something, you are no longer functioning through the mind. You are functioning through the heart center as a creator being, and you neutralize the charge and let go of fear. Now, it's important that you all understand this because this is the process that you're entering into. And as we talk about Atlantis here, uh, the whole point of Atlantis was that it was a trial run for what's going on now. And you're integrating and working on some of the very same fears and issues that you were working on then. So approximately 300,000 years ago, you had the ability to switch back and forth consciously between these two operating systems. The high societies of Atlantis, and there were three great civilizations. The, the first civilization was not in density. It wasn't in the third dimensional realm as you're existing now. They had lighter versions of their bodies, which is where you're headed to. All right? They had high technology. They had greater understanding and wisdom of the workings of the universe, other aspects of themselves, communication with other parts of the galaxy. But as we said, this is a game of descension and reascension. So... With each of these great civilizations, there was a drop in frequency. Now, when you get to the last one here, that's where all the good stuff is going on, that you're reactivating. There is not a single being on the planet who wasn't either in Atlantis or has taken on a record as an imprint. And what do we mean by that? You can, as you're putting your... your so-called life together before you incarnate. You're making choices on your genetic coding. You're choosing your family based on their genetics, uh, issues that your genetic line has, issues that your parents have so that you can set yourself up to say, all right, well, I want to learn integration on the issues of control and abandonment and abundance and separation. So you pick and choose the ones you want to focus on. And then you choose your family based on that. And if you are someone who hasn't been to this planet very often and there was a call that was put out uh, around uh, several thousand years ago, if you want to look at it from a linear time frame, where there was new energy that was needed. There were fresh perspectives that were needed in order for the experiment to succeed. So beings came from different stellar systems who hadn't been here before. All right, they said, ooh, Earth, that game, I've heard about that, that sounds good, I'd like to go. So they signed up. But they hadn't spent a lot of time in the incarnational game, in physical form. So what these beings did, or what many of you have done, are take on lifetimes. You went into the records and you put them over your own, your own experiences, all your other lifetimes. And for all intents and purposes, where you're sitting here, it feels like that was your life. It would be like taking a character from a play and taking all that history and putting it on top of yours in your, in your memory banks and saying, oh, this was also me. So when you have lifetimes such as Cleopatra, Napoleon, specifically around rulers or people who are um, geniuses in their fields, because of the unique set of circumstances, not everyone is going to have that kind of experience. But if you want to know what it's like to be a leader, how to have that experience, then or how to have that knowledge and wisdom, then you're going to create one of these imprints or overlays. And that's why you've got a lot of people who say, I was this person, because they've taken that record on and their own. From where we stand, it looks a little different. There is a different vibrational quality about it. 
but from where you are and what you're experiencing for all intents and purposes, it was yours. So everyone on this planet at some level has taken on one of those records because this time of Atlantis was so powerful and so potent to understanding what's going on now. You are moving through a cycle and you're coming to the end of it. This cycle is a 26,000 year cycle. This is, this is one of the many cycles within cycles that you are coming to a closure on. That's as big as you all are looking at it right now. But if you want to think of it as a track that you run on, and I'll paint it on that track is a white strip, and that's your start line, but it's also your finish line. All right? As you're coming to the sector of space, this white strip, as it were, is a band of photonic energy. Photons are particles of light. They're encoded with information and high vibratory frequencies. So as you move through the sector of space, you're being bathed in all this high vibratory energy, which is helping you, supporting you. Every time you come to the end of the cycle, you're moving through it so that you can integrate everything you learned for that cycle before moving on to the next. So at the time of Atlantis, as you all were preparing to incarnate, you knew that this photonic band was not available to you. He said, well, let's give it a try anyway. Let's see what we can do as far as this process of integration goes. Because remember, as a multidimensional being, you can see the future as well as the past. So you can project and say, all right, well, in about 13,000 years, we're going to play this out again. So what can we do here to help ourselves 13,000 years in the future? Take a breath. Because as multidimensional beings, you can see all of this. We are from what you would perceive to be your future. We've come back to a past time, if you will, if you're looking at it linearly, to assist. Because what happens here on this planet at this time is going to alter the entire universe. Because remember we said this is a universal game? This is a galactic experiment? You are holographic in nature. So what happens to one molecule in your body happens to every molecule in the universe. It is recorded and shared. So if you want to think of an image, and you shatter the image, and it's shattered now into 20 pieces, all 20 pieces contain within it the image of the whole. As you make a change to any one of those, the other 19 also change to reflect that change, that knowledge, that wisdom. And this is how you exist. This is how the universe is structured. Because you're not separate. Remember, that's a, an illusion of the third dimension. You are connected to all things at all times. You are all that is. Because you are divine source energy. So, as you all learn how to go through this process of integration, as you increase your frequency, you send that information on how it's done off to everyone else. This is why there are so many beings who are observing what's going on here right now. We're all watching to see what's going on on planet Earth. Because remember, that other aspect of you, say, in the Sirius star system, who couldn't work it out and they ended up blowing up a planet, taking out an entire star. Oops. When they couldn't work it out, they sent representatives to Earth to try to get it. So as you work it out here, you're sending that information off to the other aspects of yourself and saying, here's how it's done. Give it a try. Because what you perceive as that past life, or that future life, is concurrent. It's all going on right now. That's a lot to wrap your mind around, isn't it? Take a breath. We're going to breathe a lot today. <laughs> breath is the great connector. It is your best friend right now. And it helps you to move things at the energetic level and then to have movements at the physical level. So 
you all need to start breathing more and more consciously. That will also uh, assist you in retrieving more information about yourselves. Your higher self, activating, accessing your higher self. This game, by the way, is not about leaving your body and going back to stellar origins. It's about you bringing home here. It's about you anchoring your higher self into this vehicle to have an expanded awareness of your cosmic origin, of who you are while in form. So, are you all with us so far? We've, we've really gone off on some tangents. So back to Atlantis. So with the Atlanteans, many of the issues that they faced were the same ones that you're working on now. Some of the biggest, the individual versus the one. All right, so in other words, the desires, the will of an individual as someone who is separate and unique versus the collective and the will of each. And that's a big one when you talk about free will. How does that balance? How does that weigh out? The will of the one versus the will of the many. So they were struggling with that. They're also, they were also working on inner technology versus outer technology. It's a lot of high science going on during Atlantis, a lot of genetic manipulation that was going on during Atlantis. And there were opposing camps about how to operate, how to work, different viewpoints about how to interact with Mother Earth herself. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. You also had issues of the integration of the masculine and the feminine, all right, which is what you are working on right now. Integrating both the divine feminine and the divine masculine within your body. You will get the divine feminine part that you have been working to bring that back in. But also it's about the divine masculine because a lot of the masculine energy that you've experienced on this planet isn't the divine portion the lower frequencies of the masculine energy, which is suppression. All right, so it's, it's elevating that masculine energy as well, all right, because you really are at, and have been at some of the lowest points vibrationally. So you're integrating the two, and it's important to have a balance of both of them. And then also competition. That's another one. That it's got to be either or, and this is a huge issue throughout the entire galaxy. It, goes, it gets tied in with persecution as well, that one cannot exist while the other exists. All right, it's either got to be light or it's got to be dark. There's no middle ground. So if someone has an opposing belief to your own and you see yourself as disconnected, well, you've got to quell their belief before they destroy you. As an expanded being, you can, you can see that both can exist at the same time, that you don't have to share identical viewpoints, and that's all right. But that set up a lot of competition, a lot of either-or beliefs. And this time around, it's not about either-or, it's about all, that you get to have all. Now, with the idea of inner technology versus outer technology, we think that's where we'd like to start today. Uh, in Atlantis, you had the priestly caste who were holding the knowledge and wisdom as it came down the dissension process. Uh, the mass populace, they had exposure to a lot of the information, but as frequencies got lower and lower, it wasn't practiced on a daily basis. The priestly caste were the ones who held that knowledge and wisdom, who practiced, who communicated still with other star systems, who communicated with beings in higher realms and dimensions. It was common knowledge. And you went to work with your brothers and sisters in the stars. You had those who believed, if you want to call them, we'll call them the white robes, who didn't want to interfere in any way, shape, or form with anything that was going on with the Earth. All right, so things simply were as they were. Humanity's wishes were not important at all. 
All right, it was more, this is the best thing to do for the planet. And then you had those who were, if you want to call them the dark robes, and they were not, uh, many of them were the white robes, <laughs> uh, who were doing some experimentation, shall we say, uh, undercover. So the dark robes didn't care what happened to the planet. It was about personal satisfaction and power. All right, so they went the other way. Now in the middle, you had your gray robes who said, all right, well, we can, we can work with the earth and we can work with our own desires and we'll find a middle ground for it. Now, there's no one right or wrong answer here. There's no one right or wrong way to be. It was an expression of duality. And you all were kind of experimenting to see what would work, what wouldn't work. With your inner technology versus your outer technology, there were those who, again, because you remembered your stellar connections, you remembered that you were divine source energy, you were able to open up your entire chakra system. When you open up your whole structure, when your energy is completely running through your chakra system, you can create a portal. You can project yourself, not just having an out-of-body experience, but literally project yourself and bilocate and rematerialize a vehicle for yourself. All right, when you have a higher sense of awareness, this is entirely possible because you understand that you are simply energy. You are, you are source energy, and your body is just a projection of that energy. For you, here where you are, you think that you have to be given a body. It's got to be made from scratch, <laughs> and then somehow you're in it. And that's all you've got. You've got the one body. You don't understand that it's constantly being created and recreated based off of your vibrations and frequencies. But during that time, there was that awareness. They understood that they had inner technology that you could heal simply by working with frequency. Everything is first constructed at the frequency level, and then it gets projected into density and recreated in density. So everything was about vibration. Now, those who were the purest didn't want to do anything outside of the body. And you had scientists who were manipulating genes, who were manipulating food sources, who were manipulating animals to create hardier breeds. Is any of this sounding familiar to you? <laughs> and there was a lot of manipulation of the base coding. When you start to manipulate base coding in species, when you reach that level, you can alter the planetary blueprint. What do we mean by that? Planets have their own blueprint, just as you do, and what they want to accomplish. When the species on the planet start altering the vibrational signature, it can alter the blueprint of the planet itself. This, ha this has happened on many, many worlds, especially when you start getting into cloning. And there are different frequencies that are introduced and not in the same natural rhythm. It can alter the planetary blueprint. So. A lot of this was going on, and there was an awareness of those who were very tuned into the rhythm that this was creating a separate vibration. It was altering the rhythm and disrupting the rhythm, not only of the individuals, but also of the planet. Now, many of you, because of the genetic modifications in your food, because of sound and tone frequencies that you're being bombarded by, you're altering your own, your, your frequencies are being altered so that you are out of sync and out of rhythm with the planet herself. Some of this is being done, and we'll talk about who's doing it here in a moment, and some of it you're doing yourself simply so that you can recreate these very same issues that you had then so that you can integrate them. All right? Take a deep breath. In Atlantis, you had a lot of use of crystals. Crystals were a staple of everyday life. Uh, just as you use your CDs and DVDs today to hold information, crystals were utilized in the same way. They were encoded and programmed to hold frequency for healing, for health, for well-being. They were also used to amplify energy, to amplify sound. So it was also... Uh, like a source of electricity, just as um, you have your own sources today. And 
many of you are starting to reaccess some of that knowledge and wisdom about working with the crystals. Approximately 11 months ago, you all reached a point where you had done enough healing and done enough integration that you could start accessing more and more wisdom on Atlantis about how to use these tools, both inner and outer technology, to improve your lives, to increase your awareness. Because prior to that, the vibration was so intense, as you connected to it, it would activate your fear of creating catastrophe again. It would activate the pain of the destruction. Many of you are still carrying guilt and shame and blame, anger, resentment, grief. And you had reached a level where you had integrated enough of the pain that you could simply receive the information. And that's a huge step for you all. With the masculine and the feminine, there was a split at the time of the fall. And you saw that the female energy was being suppressed. So now again, you are trying to integrate the divine feminine with the divine masculine. The result and what you're seeing right now is that a lot of relationships are falling apart because it's not in balance. It's not a divine relationship. Each of you must carry within you part of each. All right, if you're just carrying one, then you're out of balance. In many of our relationships, you're trying to connect to source, to the divine feminine and masculine through another person. It's going horizontally. And when that person walks away, you think your connection to source just left. And you experience the, the wound of abandonment all over. But when you connect within yourself to both the divine masculine and feminine, it's a, it's a vertical, if you will, that it doesn't matter who's in your presence. Others will come and go and you will understand that you share time and space with them, but they do not complete you. You are complete and whole within yourself. And if that person that's standing across from you isn't the right vibrational match, that's all right. You know that the person right behind them is, that you will pull in that person. But many of you are not holding that vibrational perspective. You think, well, if I let go of this one, how do I know there'll be one behind it? Or that there's something better. So we encourage you all to start connecting more and more within yourselves to divine source. The more you connect with divine source, the more you will connect with others. There's also a fear in here that um, as you connect, as you as you kind of stretch and expand your awareness. Many of you fear that you're going to be ridiculed, that you're going to be considered to be out there, a bit freakish, and that those who are close to you are going to leave you. They're going to abandon you. But the more you connect with divine source, in reality, the more you are able to connect with others. The difference being that you are no longer connecting to their distorted self. You start connecting to the divine in everyone. So that feels very different as opposed to how you typically connect to each other. When most of you connect, you're not seeing someone else as a perfect being. You're saying, oh, you know, this is my friend and she's got this issue and that issue and, you know, she's got to fix that. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of distortion that you're looking at. You're not seeing them as a divine being of light who simply donned a role. And during the higher times in the Atlantean civilization, there was that recognition. There wasn't a need to have someone else to complete you or to have a union because they were complete and whole within themselves and they understood that. And then as they went through the dissension process, you saw the separation and the pulling apart of that. All right. Now, we're going to skip around here a bit. With the fall of Atlantis, some of the uh, information and wisdom, as, as you knew it was coming, as many of you foresaw, the records were taken and spread. You had 12 tribes, if you want to think of it that way. It was taken off to 12 locations. Now, the coding and the number 
is very important because this system is based on the number of 12. This solar system, this galaxy, and this universal game. The 12 combined to form the 1. The 1 is the 13th. The 13th is source. All right, so that's why you've got 12 dimensions. Now, you'll talk to other people, and they'll have different numbers for you. Uh, and it simply is, is where the breakdown is and, and how they are dividing and subdividing. You may hear 144. All right, dimensions are structured like, like music with octaves. But we base it, we break it down at the level of 12. So much of what you get, there is coding in. That's why you have so many numbers, sacred numbers that you come across. There's information in that frequency for you. So the information was spread out into 12 different directions. Now you have your Illuminati, whom most of you are familiar with, who seem to be a little more aware than the average person about the workings of the universe. A lot of the knowledge from the dark priests of Atlantis was carried forward and incorporated into the Illuminati. They were illuminated. They did understand, and they do understand, most of the workings. Uh, universal laws. They had information regarding the rituals that were established to to access other realms and dimensions that was passed along. Now, the Illuminati is still playing the role of the Dark Priests, and many of the Illuminati are the Dark Priests of Atlantis, reincarnated, so they can work it out again. All right? Now, there are also those who were the gray and the whites, if you will, who have knowledge and information who are still accessing those other lifetimes of wisdom, who, who have been working with those frequencies. A lot of your aboriginal tribes are holding the information of the white priests or the gray robes. All right? They received the records. They had the records that went out. And they have been working with it and holding the light end of the spectrum. So you can see that this game just keeps getting played out again and again and again. It's just the roles keep changing just a bit, the masks keep changing, but the issues are identical. The issues are the same. Now, again, we have got your aboriginal tribes who are holding that frequency. It's all about the one. It's all about the connection to the earth. That's your white ropes. The other extreme is about personal power. It's about amassing power resources. And that was the very issue of the dark priest of Atlantis. What happened there is that uh, the, there was the accessing of earth energy in an inappropriate way. The, in an attempt to, to avoid some cataclysmic events that were perceived to be coming on the planet. And some things were done out of balance. All right, and Earth energy was accessed, and, and you're doing the very same thing again. All right, as you, you are manipulating weather, you are manipulating um, earthquakes, your magnetic poles. All this is being done again. It's just being played out, slightly different arena. But the same issue, living in balance with the planet, manipulating Mother Earth. So hopefully this time you're going to understand that you are divine beings, that you're creating a reality. And again, this is the difference between inner and outer technology. Some of you, if you under, uh, can, can work here and align yourselves energetically to make a change in Mother Earth herself, as opposed to having to use some of the technology, uh, the scalar technology that is being utilized, which, which is the outer technology again, to try to make the shift. What you didn't get during that time is the holographic aspect. You forgot about that. So as you change yourselves, as you change your own vibrational state, and when enough of you are able to do that, you create a new grid. You create a new template that allows everyone else then to plug in. So let's say this again. When 144,000, that's the magic number, of you 
hold a particular vibrational resonance, you create a template, an energetic field around the planet. It's like an operator switchboard that others can plug in and out of to receive information about how something's done. Now, you can receive information from individuals in your general area, but think about it like someone um, who's over in Russia and they figured out how to do something. You probably don't have direct contact with them. So until that grid is established, unless there's someone in your direct area or you sit down to directly connect to get the information, it's going to be harder. It's like um, someone figuring out a recipe to bake a cake. All right, they can give you the recipe, which is much easier than you trying to figure out how to make it from scratch. Because sometimes you'll make some cakes and they're not so great. <coughs> all right, do you all understand? So, Mother Earth herself will never be healthy until you all are healthy because she is a reflection of you as a collective. And this is the piece that you have to get. That each of you as an individual has tremendous power, that you're not a victim down here. That you, as you realign your own energetic centers, will help Mother Earth to realign. So some of this outer technology stuff that's being done that is not in resonance with her own frequency can be transmuted so that you're working in harmony, in natural order, because some of what's going on there with the outer technology is not in natural order. Does that make sense? Do you all understand? So we're going to take a minute here and go ahead and, and open the floor to questions and answers and see, because we've got a lot of ground here, see what, what you want to know more about or what you require clarification on. Uh, yes. I was wondering, I've heard that uh, towards in the later times in Atlantis there was also a great focus on imperial attacks against other civilizations in the world, and I was wondering if this also uh, contributed to their downfall at that time. Yes, in part. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of the protection mentality. And there was also an association with the material world where the masses were looking more at, at land, at possessions, where the priestly caste were working more with the spiritual realm and the, the general understanding of how it all works. So there was, again, this kind of disconnect. to sounding familiar where the masses are still uh, working out, you know, what's going on in their immediate surrounding. They're not so interested in their spiritual connections, all right? And there are others who are working with the spiritual laws manipulating events. Now, as you said, this is also a galactic game. You all are still looking at it at the planetary level, but there were also intergalactic connections that were going on. The Anunnaki were on Mars at the time. And many of the Atlanteans were working and interacting with the Anunnaki. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Anunnaki, they have been present since the fall of Atlantis. And uh, they originally come from the Sirius star system. They are, in many ways, scavengers. Mm -hmm. And they have many uh, planets under their control that they are manipulating the populace to acquire more power, more resources. And so they were on Mars at the time, utilized most of Mars' resources, and fixed their eyes on Earth and saw what was going on in Atlantis and thought, hmm, here's a golden opportunity to see if we can't uh, help them tip over on their own. <laughs> and so they took advantage and, and helped. Now that door was wide open and those Atlanteans great, gratefully um, went along for the ride. They co-created that together. But yes, uh, in answer to your question, there was, a, there was a lot going on on the planet in general um, that also helped to, to lead to the downfall. <laughs>